news for you. Uh, a week from Thursday, so we have class this Thursday. I have a very cool class on Thursday. Um, and then we have class next Tuesday. And then the following Thursday, which is the two days before spring break starts, uh, we, don't, we, we don't have class in here. Um, I'm going to send you a video. And so it's going to be like a Social 19 classic lecture, we call them. And then you'll watch that, and you'll have to take the quiz on Canvas. So everyone next Thursday will have to will take the quiz on Canvas. Okay, cool? So that's not in two days from now, a week in two days from now. Cool? I'll send an email out to remind people. Okay, but hang on. Yo. Um, listen, wait, I, I, need, I need absolute, I need attention, por favor. Here's what we got. We, we have an issue here. Um, and the issue is that we're in the middle of, uh, to, to greater or lesser degrees, pandemic. And the predictions on this pandemic, it's likely that most of you probably weren't paying very close attention in the very beginning of this because most of us didn't. And, you know, it's really hard to understand projections and these sorts of things, right? Um, but, you know, this could have gone really, really bad. Wait, hang on. It turns out it didn't go as poorly as it could have, which is awesome. Um, but nonetheless, countries around the world, including the United States, have adopted masking as a way to combat the spread of this virus. And Masking sucks. Like, I, well, it's actually kind of cool. I haven't had the flu in three years, so that's pretty cool. Um, but on the other hand, masking sucks. Like, I don't like this. You know what I mean? I don't like the fact that you, you can't see my face. Like, right now, you know, normally you'd have a close-up of my face in the camera, and you, you would know if I'm smiling or what's going on, and you can't see that, and it matters. It really matters, and it sucks. So, like, these things right here, Okay, I don't like them, but we're here. And Penn State has a policy that you wear masks when you're in a classroom. So what I want to say to you all is, we, we have masks. You have to wear your mask. And you got to wear it up on your nose. That's just how it, it rolls. And so I don't like it either, but you have to. And so if you need masks, you have to come to the front and get one. And if you're not wearing a mask, um, we're gonna, we can see you. And on the, the, you know, the stream team in the back, the cameras are rolling, right? So we can see you. And someone's going to come out and give you a mask. That's just how it's going to operate. And I don't like it. You need to understand, like, I don't like it either. Nobody likes it. But this is the way we're going to roll. And I'm not a sheep, generally speaking. That's not my place in life. You can imagine, I'm a little bit of a rebel in this world. Can you, do we have that? Do I seem like I'm kind of rebellious? So, but some don't, you don't rebel, you just go with it, because that's, that's how it rolls. So that's where we are. So I just want to put that out there. So um, I, the last thing I ever want to do is tell people just follow, follow directions. Like, I never want to say that. Okay, so um, having said that, uh, one of the reasons that I am a bit of a rebel, and I am a bit of a, a, a person who swims upstream, and I don't follow everybody else, and I'm not afraid. I, I find, I find uh, I'm, 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 I'm somewhat irreverent. Um, I'm also a scientist, and I, and I have this crazy thing that I do, which is ask questions. And, and I'm also a bit of like... A, my, my wife, just yesterday, she said, I, I have, the only way for me to live with you, and it's been a long time now that we've been together, but is to see you at some level of having like a very mild form of Asperger's or something, right? That like, I have to see you that way. And, and, I th and it, and it kind of like, in this sense that I just, I'm, there are very many dimensions on it. It's a scale. It's a, it's a wide scale. But they, they, I just, I'm impulsive. I just sort of do 
it's often what I, what I, what I want to do. I ask the question I want to ask because I'm like a three-year-old. And I'm always asking the questions that, you know, I never learned what you're supposed to ask and not supposed to ask. So I just ask because it seems like, because I, I'm just deeply curious about everything. And so I run into a lot of, I run into issues periodically. It's amazing I still have a job, to be quite honest with you, because um, that's all. It's amazing. And, uh, but I do, for the moment, have a job. And so I have been... Many times people have tried to what we call now canceling and like call me out and I don't who knows what right get me fired I mean I don't know what there's always because I'm always seems like offending someone although I never understand why just by asking certain questions you know what I mean but in any case uh, that's what this class is this is class is like this open space to ask a lot of questions so we're going to talk today a little bit about what we can and can't ask, and how it is that, what, what's it mean that we're sort of increasingly less and less willing to ask lots of questions? And, and that's the left wing, the, the liberals, the kind of what we talk about. It's been kind of, kind of a meme, the woke crowd, if you will, on the left, that is trying to dictate what it is that people can talk about. And then the, the woke crowd on the right, who have been a, awakened to their own version of offense and who are trying to, you know, ban books and ban certain speech. And so people are banning. I mean, people, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't, you know, really, I don't understand it, actually. But, um, but it is what it is. And um, God, I have so much I'd love to say, but the cameras are on, and I'm just not going to say it because I don't want to. I don't want to. You, you know, you don't want to deal. I've had to deal with this. Like you know, last summer when f the the right wing came after me really hard, and Fox News did some special pieces on me, and you can't imagine the hate, the kind of hate. I was getting hate emails like every ten seconds for a couple days. I mean, hate. Some of them were just like. Hey, Sam Richards, fuck you, you know? Like, that was it, you know? You're an asshole. Like, they just needed to say you're an asshole, right? Like, on the basis of a tiny little clip that someone told them how to interpret. You've been in this class now. You understand. Like, you can take any clip you want, and you can just say, like, here's what this guy's talking about. And, like, and you know, like, I learned how to spell douchebag in, like, eight different ways, right? And so it's just these kinds of things, right? Dude, that was... Is that, it's funny. Okay. Yeah, all right, I got that. <laughs> it's at least, like, as long as one person, you know what I mean? So anyway, I, it's just like, but I had to deal with it, you know what I mean? Like, I had to get off my email for t t three weeks. I had one of my assistants um, d had to check, do my email, because I, I couldn't take it. You, you, you can only read so much hate for, you know, like, oh, my God. And the summer before that, it was hate that came to me from the left, from the progressives, you know, in the, in, the, in the middle of Black Lives Matter because I wasn't woke enough. And just like, oh, God. So, like, I know what it is. Um, so I'm, I'm, I truly am pretty, in, in an odd way, kind of careful. I'm not really careful about what I say. I'm just, I just stay in the level of curiosity, and I just kind of know what is and is offensive to me. And then I know it's kind of offensive to other people, and I just kind of stay away from that. And I think I do, for the most part, a pretty good job with it. But in any case, but I want to talk about this. And I also, if we go to the, the, the next slide. Um, so but one of the things that we're doing in here is practicing and, um, pr and demonstrating what, what I think is thoughtful conversation. And, you know, I think this is all really thoughtful. You know, like last class. That's a really, really thoughtful conversation that we had. But what do you do when, when you know, you are participating in, in the enslavement and supporting the enslavement of other people? Like, what do you do? How do you work with that? How do you think about that? What should you do? And, and, and most of the, these things don't have questions, but, you know, you've got to ask it. You know, that, that's like a really, you know, anyway, so we're kind of mimicking that. But on the chat... Because, you know, people watch the stream and then people watch the videos and, um, 
and then we, but we have, so we have moderators. And, and, I, and I want you, to, I just thought, you know, it's really kind of good for a hot minute to meet the moderators, the people who are really watching this, and to make sure that things go, don't go off the rails. And, and so, you know, in any case, that, so I want to introduce you to them. Um, well, first off, this is Zach here. So Zach is one of them. Uh, and, and because I think it matters to, to kind of see that a, a, lot of, a lot of thought goes into the class. Um, what's up? <laughs> this is Jamie, and this is Bossom. Jamie, can you hear me? You can un- you get, the two of you can unmute, by the way. Um, Jamie is down in Maryland, and Bassem is in Iraq. Bassem, are you, you, are you in Mosul, or are you in Erbil? Hi, Sam. How are you, you doing? Where, where are you? Can you hear me? Very well. Okay, where, where are you? I am in Mosul, in visiting Mosul. my mother. Yeah, I thought that looked like your mother's kitchen. <laughs> You've been here. <laughs> his, his, mo- his mother tried to, she tried to do me in one time. She cooked this, the most, this most fabulous meal, this huge meal that was the best meal I've ever had in my life. And then just insisted that I just keep eating and eating and eating and eating. And I thought, oh my God, this is going to be the end of me. So, hey, so Jamie, uh, let's start with you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Jamie was a student. Back, back when, Jamie? Uh, that's on business. And, uh, you know, back in the day. Back in the day. Let's just say that, let's just say that uh, some of you may have heard the, about the village and students who took over the hub and were really uh, responsible for making some serious changes um, in black, the, the black academic live on, life on campus. Jamie was part of that uprising. Um, so Jamie, you are the lead moderator for the chat. Yep, that's and, what it looks like. Yeah, and what's your intention? <laughs> like, what's your intention with the chat? Wait, are we gonna do what we're going to do after this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, basically replicate as much as possible Wink style dialogue. Mm-hmm. Replicate what is like really thoughtful dialogue. Exactly. And your goal is to uh, shut people down? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just in case. <laughs> um, basically want to support everyone thinking critically which is what this class is about and what do you th- and what do you mean by thinking critically to question one's beliefs being willing to see things from different angles um and yeah our we tend to humans they say we have this what i call a design quirk where we believe everything our brain tells us mm-hmm. we tend to believe things that we hear more than two three times Mm-hmm. Or just once, depending on the situation. And, you know, if we're going to get better or do better, have better relationships as people, it seems like it'd be good if we question what we believe because we don't, we don't know the intentions behind the people, the, the intentions behind um, those who gave us the messages that we've been given. Mm, yeah. So you are one of the reasons, the primary reason that you are the the lead moderator and have been for several years is because you are deeply committed to um, to engaging people who think like you as well as don't think like you and my first question is how did you get there to that place of really really wanting to know how it is that people came to their thoughts and their ideas uh, it's funny that you ask that because honestly, it may have been when um, I was growing up, there was a Puerto Rican family that lived in the, the 
in the neighborhood across the street. Mm -hmm. And I went over their house one day and I heard my name, but they were speaking in Spanish. And at that time, I didn't speak any Spanish. And I asked my friends what they said, and they were like, oh, nothing. I'm like, but fam, I heard my name. So from that point on, I was like, I'm learning Spanish. When I get the chance, I'm learning Spanish. And um, I got to study abroad and got to learn how, or ex learn and experience how, you know, different, different people think of things in different ways. And it was just fascinating to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And you went, you lived in Japan too, right? Yep. Yeah. Hey, so, okay, what's your, um, let's just quickly go to the chat here real fast. What's like the biggest, the, the obstacle, the thing that people trip over on the chat a lot that you see? One big thing is um, saying something without context. Like they'll be responding something that you, responding to something you said in class, but because no one really knows what they're talking about, Mm -hmm. It's like we we don't know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. and so we have to send messages, of like saying, you know, provide context. And okay, that's one. And then what's the uh, the other one we talked about yesterday? Like grand okay. soapboxing. Right? Yes, that's what I call it. Yeah. yeah. So that would be like I say, uh, hey, the problem in the United States today is white fragility, and you would say. Say more about that. Well, the problem in the U.S. is white fragility is just like white people just have a problem being fr too fragile. Okay, I hear that. Now, how did you come to believe that? Have you seen, what have you seen in your personal life? Well, I just see white people being fragile. <laughs> and that <laughs> is a situation where, like, y'all, if you were in a conversation with somebody and they're not giving you more, like, are you enjoying that conversation? Yeah. Is it really a conversation? They just keep saying the same thing over and over. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, there's no progress being made. There's no thinking. And it, it's so kind of, no so it's like if people are sitting in class or watching any of the videos and they just have the same thoughts over and over and over again, they're soapboxing in their own brain, right? Yes, and in the chat. And in the chat. So, so your goal in the chat is just to keep it going. And sometimes you have to put people on timeout, right? Because they just won't, they'll be mean or whatever, say inappropriate things. Or they'll say yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's the other thing is being like, we do our best to be as respectful and, um, well, more so, more than respectful, just thoughtful and mm -hmm. as much as possible kind. We have yeah. our days. We're human, just like all of y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we do our best. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, it's critical. Hey, hey, thanks, Jamie. Hey, Bossam. Yep. Um, so you, you have been watching. You're, we're going to invite you back on. You, you and I are going to have a conversation. But um, tell us about what, what you, the, from, from your perspective, the importance of seeing things from different perspectives? Like, what, what do you see from, your, from where you sit? Well, uh, this is my second semester of really being involved in being a moderator. And uh, we usually listen, read what the chat is about. We try to interact with whoever was on the chat. We try to see what they are trying to reach. Uh, sometimes they say a few things that's really vague. We ask for more information from them. Mm -hmm. And for me, sometimes, because I'm from the Middle East, we have some viewers from the Middle East, and they have different perspective of things that Americans do. So I interact with them on that basis. Mm -hmm. and, and hey, w w while you're here, um, so, we, so we talked to uh, Ali the other day, and, and he had the idea that he felt like, in some ways, maybe some of my students might be holding back in the global dialogues, not saying everything that they want to say or asking the kinds of questions they really want to ask. Yeah, yeah. Last, uh, last week, last week, Ali contacted me after uh, the, a dialogue, and he said, Basim, I feel that the Americans are really shy. They are not asking the questions. I said, listen, the Americans are, uh, 
they don't want to offend our students in asking questions that they might think it's offensive to them. So please, you are in a dialogue. Uh, we have five locations in Iraq. The objective of a dialogue is to get to know our student, to get to know our uh, country, to get to know our culture. Please don't be shy to ask because our students are shy too. Mm -hmm. So the, the language barrier, sometimes the question is vague for our students and they are waiting for you to start the dialogue so they can get an idea of what the question is really about because of the language. So please don't be shy. Uh, just, just say what's on your mind and uh, I'm sure you will get good answer from our students. Mm -hmm. And we're and we're starting up Afghanistan. We started last week, yeah. but we're doing it again. Good, yeah, yeah. We're great. Continuing. So it'll be very similar. Hey, so um, I want to ask Zach a question. So Zach, you so you are a moderator also. Yeah. And what and what do you what do you get from what have you learned from moderating? Uh, well, I get to see so many different like perspectives on. Uh, what people think about what you're teaching and not only are these uh, topics really important for us to learn and see mm -hmm. all these perspectives but it, it's uh, really big for us to learn what everybody is saying because everybody has a unique perspective and everybody has that uh, unique uh, spin to every and topic. and you and you want to hear multiple perspectives yeah. right? like you, you're like trying to draw it out and yeah. when you see people disagreeing, that's, uh, how do you think, of, how do you feel about that when people disagree? Well, we try and clarify as much as we can. Yeah. And we try and say, uh, like, try and see where the other person is coming from. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because that nine, uh, most of the time is where you get uh, all these new thoughts and uh, uh, unique perspectives. Mm. And what have you learned about yourself? from uh, being engaged at this level. Yeah, so uh, I've learned that even though my perspective is uh, like, uh, hmm. so. Even though you like, you have a particular perspective that you're seeing and you're holding on to, yeah. right? Um, I'm just trying to like broaden my, Got you. like, view yep. and everything and that's for me that's why i teach yeah. right when i walk into the classroom i want to leave the classroom thinking something different than i thought when i came in like that's my job because i'm a student right like i don't really know i don't understand that's why i teach because it's the only reason i teach is that i don't understand so cool so thanks man thanks for being part of the mod team um nitty can you throw us back up for a hot second um anyway zach's right here <laughs> okay uh jamie bossom thank you and keep rocking and rolling really awesome to see you on the screen and we and bossom say hi to your mom please thank you bye-bye yeah. jamie say hi to your mom also yeah <laughs> will do <laughs> all right thanks thanks ma'am um okay so Let's do this. Oh, wait, can you go to the next slide really fast? I want to just show you this. Th there's, there is an organization called FIRE. Um, it's Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. And they actually contacted me this past summer when I, I was, they've contacted me several times over the years, but this past summer when I was really being pretty hard, uh, attacked um, uh, and saying like, hey, we, we have your back, you know, because the, the university should be a place for free speech and, this sort of thing. And so uh, there is a, this sort of thing. Yeah, for exploration of interesting ideas. So in any case, it's uh, February 28th and uh, it's 6.30. So I just want to point that out. If anyone has an interest in these issues, I just want to put that up there. Okay, so um, next slide. So who's our, our two um, gentlemen? Can you, why don't, bro, why don't you have, Robert, why don't you have a seat there? And Ryan, right? Why don't you, you can take this out here. Hey, if you don't, if you have your, you have your phone on you? Yeah. 
That's cool, man. You can just play around. Don't watch the stream, though. Make sure you can't hear us. If you can hear anything, like, sing to yourself. All right, you can sit on the table if you want. We're going to be, uh, yeah, just sit right here. Okay, so listen, man. Uh, wh- so what, what's your name? Um, I'm Robert. Where are you from? I'm from Westchester, New York. Westchester, New York. Yes. That's north of New York City? Correct. Uh-huh. And, and how, what year are you? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore? Yeah. Okay. All right, dude, so listen, man. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go walk around the room. Ready? And you got to really walk around. And then what I want you to do is pick out the darkest skin person in the classroom. Like actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But make sure you check everybody out. Don't just like grab the first person. You know what I mean? I, by the way, I already know who it is, and you may not. You know who he's gonna pick? Stand up. Do you see? Do you see who he's gonna pick? Dude, how's it going, man? Um, just getting a good. Wait, talking the microphone. Just getting a good idea. Just make sure I see everyone. All right. Um. All right. Who do you got? The guy in the back with the blue mask. <laughs> oh yeah, Osa. O- Osa. Of course. <laughs> Dude, wait, hang on. <laughs> Yo, you, all, you, just, you just missed it by a hot minute. Osa, th- did you know he was going to pick you? Yeah, I so did I, man. <laughs> all right, listen, man. So here's, here's my question for you. So how was that? I didn't want to offend anyone by like, I don't, I don't know, just an interesting question and task. What, what makes it a hot topic? Just like... I, I don't know, it's like, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's just like. No, now. go ahead, try to, try to parse that out. Like, what makes it a hot topic? Just like everyone today is very, like, um, like sensitive, and you just want to make sure that, like, you're not offending anyone by, like, their skin color or race or ethnicity or anything like that. Okay, so when you say everyone is sensitive, to who is, like, she sensitive? Um, no, I didn't mean, like, everyone, but nowadays people are just, like, in the majority are more um, focused on making sure everyone's, like, politically correct. and. Okay. Okay, so we're more focused on making sure politi- – what's it mean to be politically correct? Just to have everybody's, like, feelings accounted for, make sure you're not saying anything, like, so controversial or that's going to offend anybody. And and do you have an idea as what would be controversial about picking out the darkest-skinned person in here? Um, By the way, you're not on the – but you're you're not in any way – everything you're saying right now – it's what 99.9% of certainly white Americans, but probably most Americans would say. So this, you're, nothing, you're, right, you're right in the center lane. Like, it's brilliant. So don't, I'm asking you a lot of questions. I'm not trying to put you in a corner somehow. I'm actually trying to just pull out of you. Tell us what, what you see. So go ahead. What was your question again? Like, well, first off, I want to go, when you said, like, everyone or lots of people, or like, I want to know kind of, like, who, who in particular. I would say, like, um... I would say, like, my, my generation, like, specifically just with, like, social media and everything, like, people are being held more accountable for their actions nowadays just because, it, like, people's actions are reaching a broader amount of people. Mm-hmm. So, like, my generation has done a good job of, like, holding people accountable. Um, you, sometimes it goes a little too far, but, like, other than that, I would say, like, my generation. Uh-huh. And how do you think um, – wait, can you – Joy. Hey, so, um, and who do you think would, what do you think, if you, if someone said, I'm offended that you did that, or that Sam, Sam Richards did, had you do this, what do you think they would be offended by? Um, just by, like, singling somebody out for, 
like the color of their skin. Uh huh. I don't know. Like if you asked me like to pick out like the brightest colored T-shirt, I feel like it'd be a lot different. But just because it's someone's color of their skin, it might be a little more offensive. And the color of their skin means like their race. Okay, so you're uh, you're seeing race, like you're seeing. Oh something. yes, correct. Uh huh. Um, do you what do you think o Osa um, thought? I don't know. Or how do you think he's feeling? Like the darkest person in the room. Yeah, we haven't confirmed that he is, but we both think he probably is. But that doesn't mean he is. We'd have to do a, we'd have to measure skin pigmentation. Which, by the way, when you measure it, you we measure this on the under the arm because under the arm is where you almost never ever ever get sun. And so when when you if you look at your skin under your arm, like right here, it's, that's that's your the, that's your skin pigmentation color. What do you think he's? I don't know. It, I guess it depends on the type of person he is. Like if. Like, you know, if you're a go with the flow type, like, you just kind of, I just think it's part of the class, like, might not take offense to it, but I, I don't think he would take that much offense to it. I hope not. <laughs> Dude, Osa, did, did you think you might get chosen? I had a good feeling I was going to get choked up. Yeah. Wait, are we on red? Can you put red on the overhead, by the way, in the back? Uh, you, had a, you had a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like, why, how, how so? Like, how do you see your skin? Um, I'm pretty dark skin. I did grow up in Africa, so like, I know I'm dark skin. Like, I mm -hmm. live in the sun. And uh -huh. I usually am like a pretty dark person in the room. Like in high school I was, but like, I just a trip. Bro. Yeah. Even, e so even if you're, you're, where, where, where who, are you from Lagos? Where yeah. Are you? Yeah. So, yeah, I am. so even when, when you're when you're back in Lagos, are you? Do you see yourself, generally speaking, as one of the darker people? Uh, in here? I'm not gonna lie. I did get cooked by the sun as a kid. I played like too much outdoor soccer, so yeah, I got torched. All right, pretty dark. So in this class, though, it's like, is it? How do you feel about the fact that you got singled out? Because that was the thing, right? Oh, you got singled out. <laughs> like I thought it was hilarious because I was like, "There's no way Sam set this up." Yeah. There's like no way. Realistically, <laughs> it should have been him. Oh yeah, yeah, he exactly. Wasn't in the room. Yeah, the dude in the back, Raphael, yeah. that guy, man. Yeah, that's the real dark like, guy. Hey, can you put Raphael <laughs> on the camera? Dude, Raphael, go stand next to Osa so we can see you together. I don't like this game. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I it could go one way or the other. It's hard because he has a black hoodie on, and that yeah. changes things. All right, man. Well, either way, you're both, you're, you're killing it, man. Thanks. All right. Okay, so cool. Thanks, right? Um, all right. Dude, get a hand for him. All right, bro, come on in, man. You can bring the chair. Yeah, just set it right there. All right, man. So, Ryan, right? Yeah. Dude, Ryan. What's up? So here's what I want you to do. Have a seat just here on the edge of this table. And, what, and, I'm gonna, and you can look at the, the uh, PowerPoint. So I want to explain a couple things to you, right? So one of the things that's really fascinating about, bro, about um, evolution, and, you know, like, okay, I, I recognize that there are a bunch of people in here maybe watching the stream who don't believe in evolution, but for the moment just... Humor me because whatever, we're going to go with it. So the idea is that, you know, what we, what we refer to as, as Homo erectus, Homo sapiens emerged right about here in the Nilotic region. And so by the way, we're, we're going, going to go back to Ethiopia. And we, then people just start to migrate around and to come this way and this way. We don't, we don't show the arrows going this way, but people began migrating. It went up into Europe, um, across Asia, down through the south, and then up into Eurasia, and then up there, and this is how we got to, to the native peoples of the Americas, and the whole thing is pretty awesome, right? Just how people started in one spot and then moved around. Okay, cool? And what happened was, as you migrate to different areas of the world, your body encounters 
different climactic conditions, you eat different foods. I mean, all sorts of different things happen along the way because like life here in, South, in Central Africa is very different than life in the desert, very different than life up north here or coming up into this area or down around here. It's like, you're, and what happens is bodies change to adapt to the environment in which, in which people are living. Now, not right away, like, you know, you, your great-great-great-grandkids, if we survive for you to have great-great-great-grandkids, but if we do, they're, they're not, they, we're, their bodies aren't going to adapt. There may be some tiny adaptations, but mostly we're not going to see a lot, right? So we look at, you know, all the, you know, the build of your body, how thin you are, your ears, the shape of your nose, the shape of your eyebrows, the shape of your forehead compared to your nose, your lips, everything, right, is connected to some kind of selection process and adaptation process. And so one of the things is skin color, that as we moved north, so ar around this area, so let me give you, do you know the story of skin? No. You don't have any idea? Like why you have light skin and she has darker skin and she has sort of skin in between, you don't have a sense of? No. Okay, let me give it to you because it's a really cool story. So, so one of the, so one of the things that uh, what we see is that once human beings started losing their hair, okay, um, you know, the, the body is at risk from, as a result of the ultraviolet rays of the sun. And, you know, people aren't wearing, we don't have clothing and we don't have sun spray and people don't have hats. So, you know, you're out in, in these, in these, especially the nilotic region, and the sun is like bearing down on you. And, you know, you're getting all these UV um, rays of the sun. And skin cancer has been around forever. This isn't like a new thing in the past 40 years. Skin cancer has been forever. And we don't, and we don't, you know, people don't survive, right? And so one of the, but we need the sun and we need the UV rays because it's important for the production of calcium. It's important for, the, for vitamin D. And so we got to get a certain amount of UV in us and, and, and folic acid that we need for the development of embryos and so on. But too much UV sends us over the edge. And so the body has this way of adapting by producing this, this different skin pig, enzymes and pigmentations. One is melanin which has the ability, what, what it does is it protects us from the UV rays of the sun, but it also changes the skin. That it, makes, it, produ it produces a, a darkening agent in the skin and turns the, in br the skin brown. And the more melanin you have, the more protection you have, but the more brown is your skin. So we say black, but it's not really black, it's brown, okay? And so this is, this, so melanin is this really awesome thing. You need a little bit, some, sometimes you need a lot, but for you, your people and my people, when we, we're part of this, can you go, can you go back, um, can you go, go back one? Oh yeah, right here. So as we're going up here, right, so check this out. We're going up here, right? We're getting less, okay, go to the next slide now. We're getting less sun, Okay, and so, you know, we don't need so much melanin, but what we really need is as much UV from what sunlight we can get as possible. And so we want, so what's going to happen is our bodies are going to produce melanin, so we're going to get lighter because we're going to, because, because we have less melanin and our bodies get lighter and then like, um, we, and then our bodies adapt in a positive way to the climate that we're in. So it's awesome, right? So we're getting, you know, the folic acid, we're getting, you know, we're getting vitamin D, we're getting calcium, we have strong bones. And so this is what we see. This is a map of skin pigmentation. And so Nigeria is right here. And so you see like, well, you wouldn't, that means nothing to you at this point, but to the rest of you, right? Okay, so what we see is here's the equator right along here. And so we see the darkest skin along the equator. But as you move away this way and you move away this way, we see the skin lightens. So, you know, you and I, we're like up in here. What's your background, by the way? My grandparents are from Denmark and my other grandparents are from Ukraine. Dude, you are like whiter than white, man. Okay, so you're, you're up here, right? And so, and your other grandparents are from Ukraine? Yeah. Damn, are they still alive? Yeah. 
Well, my great grandmother and grandparents are from Ukraine. Oh yeah. All right. So anyway, so you're you're, you're really white, and so yeah. therefore you're gonna have really light skin, and I can you can see it. Like you yeah. see, can you get a close up of him? Make sure we see how light his skin is. Okay. So, <laughs> pretty awesome. Uh, and you got the white hair too, dude. Yeah. You're like, you're man, purely white guy. Okay. So. <laughs> So the key thing, here's the key idea. Wait, what happened? Is someone standing against the light switch? Yeah, be careful. Okay, so here's the key thing. You ready? If you have, if you have light skin, that you, it's re, it means your ancestors lived in a part of the world. They, they evolved, let's say, in a part of the world where it was really important for them to have light skin. Okay? If you have dark skin including like really dark skin, right, brown skin, then what that tells us is that you evolved, your ancestors evolved, they lived in a part of the world where if they needed to have really dark skin, and if they didn't have really dark, because they needed lots of melanin, and if they didn't have it, they would not have survived. So dark skin, really dark skin is awesome because it means survival of people who are living, who evolved, who lived along the equator right there, right? Light skin is awesome for people up north. If, you're, if you have dark skin and you live in a really cold climate, like those of you in this class who have really dark skin in a place like State College, you know, where you, get, you don't get a lot of sunshine in the middle of the, the winters, like you need to make sure you get it. Anytime there's, you can get UV rays, you need to go out and get it because your body needs that. And so, for example, right? Okay, so, so that's cool. Skin color, right? Awesome? Dude, what do you think about that? Now, what do you, I just gave you the short lesson on skin color. How is that? Um, like, how, how do you, what do you think about, like, the people, you look out here and you see all these different colored skins. Like, how is that? Awesome. It's awesome, right? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Pick out the darkest skin person in the room. Nah, you can walk around. Question, What's that? A tough question. Wait, why is it a tough question? No, hang on, hang on. Go ahead. Because I don't want to single people out. I don't. But like no, that. you. But you just heard from me. Like why? Yeah, I know it's awesome. And but like, no, but well, why would you? S- <laughs> they all just heard from me. Also, they just heard how valuable it is that we all have different skin tones, but right? They, but they don't have to pick. Yeah, but they got it. Like they're cool. Like, they, but wait, wait, wait. But hang on. What if somebody was offended by that? What would you say to them? I'm sorry. <laughs> dude. No, dude. Sorry. Fail, my friend. Fail. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. No. What else could you say? Do you got anything? I'm blanking right now. Dude, I know. You're on the hot seat. All right, listen. Yeah. You know what you could say? You could say, did you not just listen to what Sam Richards said? So blame it on you. Oh, yeah, totally. No, it's like, did you not listen to what he said? This is science. This is like not, you like, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go find the darkest skinned person in the world so we can talk to that person about, and then, and then so we can talk to that person about these All issues, right? right? Hang yeah. on, hang on. Now you got it. It's, no, no, hang on. So you get, that's the science yeah, piece, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, now you can do it, right? Okay, so I gave you, it's like I gave you the frame upon which you can have a conversation about skin tone that people think is really sensitive, but you're going like, hey, what are you sensitive about this? This is science. Come on, man. Right. I gave you that permission, right? Yeah. So what makes you feel okay going for it? Right now? Yeah. Because of everything you said, and like, if we're just having a conversation about what we just discussed, then it's totally okay. Yeah. And if I asked you to pick out the lightest skin person in the room, how would that be? That would also be very awkward, and I'd say sorry. To white people? Yes, because you're still singling someone out. Like, you do not want to be called, like, oh, you're the lightest skin person here, or yeah. like, vice versa. So, do you feel like that? If someone, if I, like, if you were sitting down and I was like, dude, you got it. You are so white. Like, I did say it earlier. I was like, put a camera on this guy. I don't care personally. Okay, so you think somebody might care. Yes. But if you explain to them it was for science, for the purposes of science, 
then maybe they wouldn't care. They uh-huh. probably wouldn't care, actually. Do you think the white person, the person who you picked as the lightest skinned person in the room, would be less uh, likely to be less offended, so to speak, than the darkest skinned person? Maybe just because I'm a white person picking them as well. Uh huh. So if it was a a dark a darker skin per somebody with dark skin pigmentation picking someone else who's dark, more darkly pigmented. It'd be similar if it and a like white person. Yeah, but you're. The white person, you're pretty white, dude. So you might yeah. have to just hold a mirror up and pick yourself. Exactly. Right? That's what I'm saying. Okay. So, huh. Okay, so you don't, have to, you don't have to pick. But I think this idea... So can you go to the next slide? I want to kind of point something out here. Huh? Oh, wait. There is a question from the stream, by the way. Stream person about white fragility. And, like, are white people really fragile about certain things? And I think that... I don't like the term. There's a, you know, a book about white fragility. It's like, do you think white people are f- fragile about a lot of stuff? Of like, Recently, some stuff maybe. Not all stuff, though. Yeah. There's, a, there's this idea that um, white people, hey, don't forget, if you leave early, make sure you go see OSA. If there's an idea that people have that white people are, that we're, we're really so afraid of, being a, of, of offending people, that, which you, you're shaking your head, right? We're so afraid that we're like fragile. Immediately you bring up like race or something. We're like, oh my God, no, I don't want to talk about this. Like, oh. That's the fragility thing. Yeah. Where somebody else might say, oh yeah, you need some cojones. And I'm like, let's go, like go in, like dig in, like have a conversation. Like, oh my God. I feel like that's a touchy subject, like most of that, like controversial stuff, especially nowadays with everything that's happening. I feel like I don't know. Yeah, maybe, but I feel like in the in a lot of in in a lot of black and brown communities, um, people can really just go at it yeah. and then just walk away, and it's like it's okay. But white people, I guess it maybe it's running the risk of being called a racist. Yes, makes is that what you're really af- well? Afraid? There's also yeah, that is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, go to the next slide. I, there's no slide on there? This one right there. Oh, oh no, this one, yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I have this idea, bro, Ryan. I have this idea that a lot of stuff, like when I first asked, so he, so Robert did the same thing you did. He actually picked somebody, but... I mean, no, no, you don't have to pick anybody. Uh, but he picked someone, but I didn't give him any context. I just was like, go, go pick it, right? Right, so you, that would have been really troubling. He did a nice job, though. But the idea is a lot of stuff that, like in a class like this, a, lo- a lot of people will say about this class is like, oh, I, feel, I feel uncomfortable when you talk about certain things or when you did like this, right? Or the thing, not so much with you, but with him. Like, that was so uncomfortable, and I was feeling really nervous. Um, but sometimes the uncomfortable is, like, it's really just unusual. We're just not, we just don't talk about it. Like the science of skin or something, right? But what happens is, because people don't have an understanding of that, they interpret it as insensitive or offensive. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, re- I'm really only uncomfortable because I've never been part of such a, conversation like the one that we just had but because I don't know what to do with it because I've never been part of it I'm going to say I'm offended or it's insensitive and, and there's nothing insensitive about like is there anything insensitive about picking the, the person with the lightest skin or the darkest skin no I mean inherently there isn't right we're just like if I said pick the person with the darkest hair or lightest hair or or straightest hair or whatever, that wouldn't be. I'd pick someone. Yeah, okay. But there's something about skin, right? They, this is what we carry with us. It's politicized. And so then it, if you don't know how to navigate the waters, then it becomes a thing. And so sometimes the only thing we can do is say, I'm offended, or that's insensitive. But it's like, you don't have to go there. Just be like, maybe you just don't understand what's going on. And maybe you're just uncomfortable because you don't understand what's going on. Which is for me, because this is, the kind of stuff that I do every day, and I've been doing it for so many years, my whole life, really, that I'm comfortable in so many different situations, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, it does. And do you feel like you want to, you want to, that's where you want to go? Yeah, I mean, I will. All right, cool, man. Dude, thanks. Yeah. Hey, by the way, um, first, first off, a hand for Ryan. And also, you were, you were, you were involved in Thon? Yeah. What were you doing? Uh, I was just in the stands with, for my organization. Just cheering on. What's yep. your organization? Uh, Fly Game and New. Cool, man. Hump, did anybody dance in here? Who, who danced? Can, wait, can you just stand up really fast if you dance? Who danced? One. All right, cool. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, so if you don't, hey, nice, hey, congrats, everyone who's involved in Thon, congratulations, man. You, you've raised a record amount. And if you don't know, those of you who are watching and you don't know, it's the largest student-run philanthropy in the world that raises money for pediatric cancer, different levels, research, and so on. And, uh, and it's pretty awesome. Like, you, you know, people get a really a, a great opportunity to participate in that. Cool. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, all right, man. So here's what I want to do. Can we have the next three? Next. Wait, who's our? Yeah. Thank you. Wait, do, do we have another one? Do we have another mic? Oh, right, okay. Hey, um, how y'all doing? Can you introduce yourselves, if you would, please? Hi, my name is Winnie. I am come from Burma. From Burma. Yes. And so you come from Burma, meaning you are a citizen of Burma. Yes. How many people are aware of, how many people have any idea what's going on in Burma? One. Okay, oh, a few people are in there. Um, okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Christiana. I'm from Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh, and and what's your ancestry? Cameroonian. Cameroonian. Are you first generation, second gen, like what? First generation. Cool. All right. And wait. Uh, I'm Paige, and I'm from Bucks County, PA. Paige from Bucks County, PA. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to have a conversation about hair. You all are going to have a conversation about hair. And hair is one of these topics that can be... First off, can hair be an offensive... How is hair? On a scale of, of 1 to 10 in terms of being offensive. It could be offensive. Could, like really could be offensive is 10. And it's like, nah, it's whatever. It's just like talking about the, the weather. It's like a 1. Where is hair in that? Um, I guess like the first thing I think about of like hair offense is cultural appropriation. Is okay, cultural appropriation stuff. Okay, so it could be offensive. Winnie, how about you? Do you have a sense of that? Is hair potentially offensive? Um, in Burma, like we have Chinese people, Indian people, and Burmese people, mm -hmm. and we all have like same hair, mm -hmm. like same color. So like we don't really care about that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter it too doesn't much. It doesn't matter. Paige, how about you? Um, personally, I don't find um, any hairstyles offensive, but I do am aware of cultural appropriation and that it can be to certain cultures. But uh -huh. um, personally, I just see, uh, I mean, other than that, just as like people expressing themselves. And Could you say, have you, do you know about, cult, have you heard this term cultural appropriation? Yes. What can you, Paige, can you say what it means? Yeah, it's just kind of um, when you are kind of imitating a culture um, that you're not a part of, basically. When you're imitating a culture you're not a part of. Like any culture or? Um, like an example that comes to mind is um, for, I, again, I don't, it's touchy, but like I, I personally am not offended, but I know that um, some people in the black community get offended if someone would do like dreadlocks or um, kind of like dreads. I, I remember there was a story about Zendaya and there was a problem because she was like half white and half black for wearing um, dreads on the, um, on the like red carpet or something. Uh -huh. 
So, Winnie, what, what do you know about cultural appropriation? Um, what we discussed in class, like I can see that um, if you wear like, if you lower your pants, and then mm -hmm. a white person wearing it, imitating it, that's like cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also like bleaching, not, yeah, bleaching your hair and then putting on braids. Mm -hmm. When white people do it, it's like cultural appropriation. How about when black people straighten their hair to look like white people? Is that cultural appropriation or look like you? Kind of, yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's that it would be the correct answer. Uh, hey, so could we, here's what I want to do. Can we, just, I just want you all to ask questions of each other about your hair, okay? And, and I just want to sort of just, just have the, the ju judge it a little bit. Sorry, I'll get out of the way. Just want to kind of judge it, and not judge it, but assess whether what is and is not a sens it, sensitive. And I want you to ask questions that, I want to know, first off, what's a question, you could be, what's a question that would be insensitive to ask and then what's one that wouldn't be and I just want to have this conversation so um Christiana maybe we'll start with you with like Winnie's Winnie Winnie's hair and her culture like what what, would, what do you want to know about her hair um so what's your hair routine or how how was the process of you getting ready when you do your hair hair routine um I shampoo and condition <laughs> and dry my hand that's it that's it? Go ahead, another one. How long does it take you? Um, 15 minutes to dry my hair. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to like a fancy event, would you do anything differently or is it the same routine? The same routine. <laughs> Dude, okay, good. All right, can I keep going. Do you, Paige, do you have a question from Winnie? Do you ever curl it or straighten it or dye it or modify your hair in any way? Um, back in high school, I dye my hair to brown and I also curl my hair, but yeah, right now I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So was it originally like that color brown or like it, that's your natural hair right now? This is my natural okay. hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you dyed your hair, how did your parents feel about it? Um, when I dye my hair, I already graduated high school, so they just say do whatever you want. <laughs> Wait, so what? What was? So like, in middle school and high in middle school and high school, my parents don't allow me to dye hair, but uh -huh. after I graduated, they gave me the permission. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't just kind of pick like yellow or purple or something. <laughs> blue and white, man, for Penn State. You know, next time you should go home with blue and white hair. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, all right. So what else? Any other? So why did they not let you dye your hair in middle school and high school? Was it like controversial? My parents are pretty conservative and my relatives, like my cousins don't dye their hair and they just want me to be a good daughter, I guess. Hey, so what do you, so let me ask the two of you, what could you ask that you might be a bit controversial? Is there any hairstyles or like um, that someone else could do that would offend your culture at all? It's mostly about my family background. And in Burma, we, you don't see like colorful hair on the street, mm -hmm. it's all black. And people who dye their hair, it's mostly like celebrity, like. I don't know, like popular people, I guess. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. What, you're gonna, you'll love this question. It's a cool question, I think. What's considered the most awesome hair to have in Burma? Like for you as a young, as a young woman, right? A healthy black straight hair will be awesome. So what's a follow-up question? Um. Like the hair like I want, like if I could like pick the best hair that like I would love to have. Yeah, no, no, like for her, like what's health? What do you mean? Like, so she just said what it is. So what does that look like? 
Yeah, so like what does healthy look like? Is it silky or? Yeah, pretty silky and traditional hair style. Uh-huh. Ask her, ask her, is her hair silky? Is your hair silky? No. <laughs> it looks really, looks shiny. Because <laughs> I dye my hair and also curl it, kind of damage it. Mm. Don't we all? Okay, so um, Paige. How about Paige and Winnie? We're going to now ask questions of Christiana. So now the level goes up here, right, a little bit, right? Every, we, we're cool because you, you, know, you know it, right? Are you, we all know it because you're black. <laughs> Are you feeling it? What are you feeling? Um, like when you say you know it, are you, like obviously my hair, like is it real or? No, well, any number of things, but you're a black woman, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I say, if I'm asking the two of you, hey, ask Paige some questions about her hair. What do you think, like, what, what do you think, what do you think is the most offensive thing you could ask Paige? It's, first of all, is there oh. anything? Winnie, do you have anything? Um. Or go ahead, Christiane, anybody. When you use dry shampoo, what is that for again? I'm like, no. Um, dry shampoo is just kind of like when my scalp gets oily and oily. you don't, just kind of gives some volume and takes away like the oiliness. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, with a lot of, I feel like it's more common in like the white culture yeah. of how like dry shampoo is a big thing because they're always just like, not they, but just like people who I know, it's like they, think that the hair is too oily, 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 oily. So I wonder if that's controversial or offensive or anything like that. And so the, maybe that would be something that would, uh-huh, okay. Winnie, do you have a question that would be offensive to Paige? I'm just curious because I've seen like, I don't know, like pictures about um, white people have, like they develop a color when they grow up. Is it true? Like what hair? Like they dye their hair, are you asking? Or? No, like they change their hair naturally. Um, I mean, my hair used to be have like natural highlights when I was little and used to be a lot blonder. And then right now it's dyed. Um, so then as I got older, I lost those highlights and it was like a darker brown. So now I dye it um, since I don't have those natural highlights. But I don't think, I think if anything, when you get older, it might get a little darker but um, I don't think it's like anything really drastic and changes of color, like naturally wise. So let me, let me ask you a question. Is there anything they could ask you that would be offensive? I don't think so. Not about my hair, at least. Yeah. What, do you think there's things that people could ask other, other white people? Like, just pick random white women out in here. Um... I don't really think like offensive unless you're telling them like it looks bad, being like mean about it. Um, I don't know. I don't can't. Nothing comes to mind. Mhm. Mm yeah. So you don't have anything. Okay. So let's turn to Christiana. Ask her some questions. I am curious. What are some hairstyles that you find um, offensive? or like cultural appropriation? Um, whenever people who are not black, they have braids or dreadlocks or like cornrows, feed in stuff like that. Corn okay, go ahead. So like, um, like even, so I'm just asking because I genuinely don't know. Um, you know, like people go on vacations and they'll get like, I remember when I was little and you go to like, you would get like those like braids, the oh, cornrows with the like beads. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is that, would you consider that um, offensive? Um, it, like me personally, I guess because I just equate it to like the like Dominican Republic culture. Uh, I don't really know, but I guess, I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> So if she went to the beach in Jamaica or the DR, she goes down to like Puerto Plata and she's 
you know, sitting on the beach, or you could go on the beach, and someone comes along and says, hey, we want to put your hair in these really tight corn rolls and stuff. I think because, like, the people there, they do do it to them. That's where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I don't know. It's a chance to make a buck. Right. Yeah, provide a living. Okay, what, what else? What other questions? What questions, Winnie, do you have? This is going to be really offensive. No, it's okay. <laughs> Don't, hang on. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> is your hair rear <laughs> right now? Oh, so right now, it's not. Um, I have, like, protective style, so my hair is cornrowed. Like, my natural hair is cornrowed. And then this is a wig, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. So what do you think was, what would be offensive about that? I don't know, it's just their thing to wear wigs and then if you tell them it's fake, it's kind of bad because they took time to like, you know, make it pretty. Oh, so the idea you think is that if people are wearing wigs, they're trying to pass off that they're not wearing a wig. They're trying to make it look like it's real hair. So if you're asking if it's a wig, you're saying like, I think it's not your real hair. Mm, Can you I respond like to that? It's the way that you ask. So like, I guess it's, if somebody just asked, like, is this your hair? I don't know. I, I, like, I guess I'm just more of an open book. I wasn't always like that. Uh -huh. I've been like, more accepting of my natural hair. Um, so as I've gotten older, it's more like, yeah, this is my hair. This is not my hair. OK. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Ask an offensive question. <laughs> it's not yours. Like, what's a question you could ask that would be offensive? Um, give me a second. What's that? Just thinking. Or Winnie, do you have another one? One of you. I have a whole bunch. Do you wash your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, awesome. Wait, hang on. What leads you to ask that question? Because you wear, um, she, she just said her real hair was like, mm -hmm. like corn. Corn rolls, yeah, corn yeah rolls, really so tightly rolled. How do you wash your hair with that? Okay, dude, awesome. Hang on. That's such an awesome question. Okay. Uh, yes, I wash my hair. Um, whenever it's in this, like, underneath my hair, obviously, I take it off. And then whenever it's cornrowed, I just try to, like, keep it clean by washing it, shampoo, just the regular. Uh huh. But um, whenever I have my natural hair, it's a little bit of a different wash routine than yours. It takes um, like much longer, like I have to deep condition it. It takes hours and then like shampoo, conditioning again, doing like some like hair oil treatment. So it takes me a long time, like mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. Question? So do you wash your wig? Yes, I wash my wig too, but it's not, whenever I wash it, it's not on my head. I just take it out and do that routine, which is more mm -hmm. like easier, like a shampoo and conditioning. Mm -hmm. Do you have another question? I'm done. You're done? Uh, ask her why, <laughs> ask her why she wears a wig. Say, why do you wear a wig? He said, why do you wear a wig? <laughs> why do I wear a wig? Um, because I like it, it looks cool. Um, I like how sinks of like my hair texture, it's very like versatile. So like I can wear wigs, I can do braids, I can do sew-ins, I can dye my hair if I want. I never dyed my hair before though. Um, so yeah, it's just like something to express myself. And then also it is a protective style because going to school obviously can be time consuming, busy. So it's just easier to manage whenever I don't have to touch my actual hair too much. Mm -hmm. Do you have another one? Mm. How long is your natural hair? Dude. Um, oh yeah. Wait, hang That's on. Question. Just keep it. Great question. Uh, so my natural hair, like I have um, 4C hair, so it's very, very coiled and it's Afro. So I would say like if I were to straighten it, that's where I would see like the real length of it since the coils aren't there. So it's just like shorter length. Mm -hmm. Cool.
Anything yeah. else? So, here, so here's my take, right? The reason we're, it's a very simple conversation, right? I mean, really, you think like, okay, like, wait, what's, what's the point? The point is that these are the kinds of conversations that we don't have, right? There's so much that we could talk about with your hair. Like if you, if the two of you knew more about Asian culture and, and like we're really in Asian cultures, you would have so much, so many questions for her because for Asian women in particular, there's so many pieces of hair that's so big. And same with black women and same with white women, right? Like the way you do hair and stuff. But it's just these simple things that we often don't pay attention to. Okay, listen, you all. Um, hey, can we have a hand, by the way? All right. Thank you. All right, we'll see you all on Tuesday, Thursday. Hey, that's very cool. Wait, so if you let, so, so right now, your hair, if you like.